Okay, I think we're live. <laughs> hey everybody, um, I'm Amelia Carvine. I am the host of Cake Crew. Uh, we are live today with Sydney Galpern in the kitchen. Hello. So this is exciting. Um, Sydney is actually out here for uh, IBIE. This is uh, out here in Vegas. It's kind of fun to have it right here. So she was, uh, we knew she was going to be in town, so we scheduled a training with her. And uh, so glad that she could join us. Yeah, thanks for having me. Yeah. Okay, well, let's, um, for those of you that don't know Sydney, we're going to tell a little bit about you, about where you came from, what you're doing now, things like that. Okay, well, um, basically, I've been doing this for about six years. And I started with just basic wilting cake decorating, um, taking classes. I started kind of traveling to more and more shows when I got more interested in it. And um, now I had a bakery a few years ago, but now what I do is I just travel around and I teach and uh, write articles and just uh, mainly what I work with is Isomal, but um, I'm also a certified professional chocolatier and I do some cakes as well. Very cool. Yeah. How old are you? I'm 18. 18. That's pretty cool. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you started when you were 16? Uh, I started when I was 12. 12. Mm -hmm. 12. That's pretty amazing. I told my daughter about you last night oh, <laughs> and showed your picture, and she's not that much older than you. Oh, <laughs> she was really excited about that. I thought that was really awesome. Good. So, but you know, age, she's young, but she really knows her stuff. Okay. So, so yeah, that's we wouldn't have her on if she didn't, <laughs> right? <Yeah. laughs> All right. So, um, Sydney has a line of um, products. She's got molds, and she has uh, some silicone mats that have just come out. I don't know if you can see the, can you see that? I think you can, <laughs> the detail on there. Um, they are made circular so that they work well with cupcakes, yes. right? Mm -hmm. So awesome, awesome. Yes. Love the cupcake idea. Um, she has a whole bunch. Uh, if you go to her website, see me cakes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, simicakes.com. Simicakes.com. You can see all the different mats that they have. Um, today we are actually doing a giveaway. We're giving away six mats. Mm -hmm. There's all these, all these. Mm -hmm. I can get them all in the picture. Yeah. And one more. I don't know where they are. Yeah. <laughs> but there are six textured mats that you will get. Um, through our giveaway today, so thank you, yes. Sydney. Yes. <laughs> Sydney. <laughs> no thank you, Sydney, for uh, doing that giveaway for us. Mm -hmm. And um, that's what our project is going to be today. Is Sydney's going to be teaching us how to use these mats in one way. We'll show you a few uh, ideas of things that you can do um, with these mats, so that you guys have some really good ideas, really great. Uh, projects that you can do with these. It, it, I, I see endless yeah. amounts oh, yeah. of opportunities. A lot of things. <laughs> so, okay, we're going to let Sydney just take it up, take over and uh, show us the, the project. Okay. And I'm going to step out of the picture and kind of be the cameraman for a little bit okay. and uh, we'll go from there. Okay, awesome. Okay, so, switch yep. all right. So what I'm going to show you today is the mats are specifically um, not just for cupcakes. They are designed so that they are the right size for cupcakes. Here, I'll hold these up so you can see a little bit better. But they can work for a lot of other different things. They're not just for cupcakes. They can work with cakes. They can work with ice mold. I always, um, since I specialize in ice mold, that's what I like to do most of. I was going to throw a little bit in there whenever I do a demonstration. So I'm just going to show you a bunch of different things um, that you can do with all of the different mats. So we have about, I think, over 20 designs now. And um, part of the designs were designed by Ruth Ricky. So she has had a lot of influence on some of these beautiful designs. So I'm just going to get right into it and show you some things that you can do with it. All right. So let's see. I'll reach over here. And the first thing that you can do um, with the mats that I'm going to show you, just to make sure that I have some drying time, is I'm going to show you how to use ice melt with them. Um, you can use these. In a few different ways with ice melt, you can see this one is kind of a spider web pattern. So perfect for Halloween coming up. And um, you can use these. Marshall and Roland Winbeckler have been using these for bases for their sculptures, ice melt sculptures. But you can also use them in backgrounds. Sometimes I'll use these um, kind of like as just a backdrop for pieces. And so I'm just going to show you how to use some ice melt on top of those. 
So they are made out of silicone, so isomalt's not going to stick to them. And uh, so we're just going to heat up the isomalt in the microwave for about 30 seconds and then 15 second intervals until it's a liquid. So I have my mat here, and since it is silicone, the isomalt will not stick to it, and I don't have to grease it or powder it or anything. It just needs to pour straight onto the mat. So I'm going to set it down kind of off to the side here. And this is one of my Simi Flexform molds. It's another mold in the line that we design um, and that we manufacture. So it's basically just a tube of silicone that I'm going to use to kind of guide the ice mold. So I'm going to take it and I cut the edges so that they're at an angle. You can see that? So that it will fit together perfectly. So I'm just going to outline. You could just pour this freeform and just kind of have a puddle if you didn't want you know, a specific exact circle. Or you can also grease a metal cookie cutter and you can pour it inside of that if you wanted more of a detailed shape. All right, so see how I just, I just kind of propped it up with the scissors there to make sure it doesn't move on me. That's a nifty setup right there. So you can use it for the mat, mm -hmm. and then you can also use it for actual pouring. Yeah, so yeah, awesome. you can definitely. You can switch back and forth as many times as you want. They're silicone, so they're not going to break down. Um, you can go back and forth as much as you need to. All right, so I have the ice mount here, and I have it in a nice silicone bowl again because it won't stick. And you can see that it's nice and bubbly. So I'm just going to let all of those bubbles disperse. And that way, I don't transfer them into my piece. So um, I did color this. I used, uh, this is Turkish black uh, powdered color from uh, the Sugar Art. And so I just sprinkled a little bit of that in and stirred it up before I melted it. So Can I talk to you about those colors really mm -hmm. fast for yes. just a minute? I'm going to come in here and we'll talk about it. I, I don't want to take yeah, too long because then that'll make your <laughs> colors too uh, set up. Mm -hmm. um, but these colors right here, can you use just any coloring for? Um, you can use, there's a few different types. I like to use the powders from the Sugar Art because they're ground fine enough and they disperse in the ice mold. Um, but you can also use a liquid color. So if you have like, okay. an airbrush color, you can't use gel paste colors. No, they will gel. not disperse. Okay. They'll get kind of cold. It won't blend up. Right. Okay. All right. That's all I wanted to know. <laughs> Good to go. Okay. So you can see now that there's nearly not as many bubbles. There's a couple sitting on the top, but they won't really be that big of a deal. I can get them out afterwards. So I'm just going to take and I'm going to pour this straight onto the mat. And I'm not going to fill it up too much. I'm just going to cover the bottom. I don't want it too chunky, so if I were to fill it to the top, it would be really chunky. So I'm just kind of going along the outside, making sure it's all filled in first. And I just cover over it. So this will be kind of a nice, light, darkish color. I'm going to go over it with some powder afterwards as well, uh, just to highlight it, but this will give it a nice base. All right. I like how, I, I don't know if you guys can see it, and I don't know if we can get a closer shot. Here, maybe I can take a webcam and just a little closer without bumping too much. <laughs> you guys can see that. Cool. Yeah. Oh. So there are a couple little bubbles that are sitting on the surface. So actually what I'm going to do is I'm going to torch them away. And that just pops them. All right. So the ice malt is going to take about probably 15 minutes to cool. I don't want to touch it because the ice melt when it is liquid is about 300 degrees. So you have to be very, very careful with it. Uh, you don't want to touch it. I would highly recommend wearing gloves while you do this because it is extremely hot. Usually um, a thick cotton glove with a latex or a plastic glove over top of that will help to buffer the heat. Awesome. Look how cool that is. You can yeah. see. Nice and glassy. You can see through it. Mm -hmm. It's cool. Yeah, it's just kind of a different design. technique. It makes it look unique. Nice for Halloween. Exactly. Okay. There we go. There we go. Okay. All right. So I'm going to let that cool. Now the next thing that I'm going to show you how to do is I'm going to show you how to use the mat to impression. So not just on the cupcakes. They can be used for uh, cakes as well. It doesn't have to just be a little you know, circle. So what I'm going to do is I have this one, and this is kind of a bubbly looking mat. Right? And I have a cake here that I covered in fondant. I use satin ice fondant, and I just um, twist it together some blue and some white. So you can see it kind of gives it a marbly effect. And I'm going to use the mat 
on top of the fondant. So I just covered it just a few minutes ago, so it's nice and soft. You don't want to wait too long or else this will harden. Uh, but I'm just going to take the mat and I'm going to press down and give it a pretty good pressure just to make sure that it will really give it a deep imprint. Okay, so you're doing this on styrofoam. Mm -hmm. How yeah, would you do this styrofoam. on an actual cake? It's the same process. Okay. Yep, you just push so it down. Would you want to make sure that your cake is frozen before you do this? It doesn't have to be. Um, you don't want to push too hard, obviously, because then you don't can smush the cake. Too. Right. But it, you don't have to push too hard to get the impression into it, especially if you do it right after you fondant the cake. Okay. So as soft as it can be is better. It'll be a lot easier. All right. I'm just going to peel this up, and I'll hold it up so you guys can see. Very cool. And I just have one circle right now, but I'm going to kind of keep going. And I'm not going to worry about any of the lines. You'll notice I'm not really pushing too much around the edges because I don't want to get too much of a line here. I want it to be seamless. I don't want it to look like circles. You could have it look like circles if you wanted. But I'm just kind of pushing in the middle so it's not too defined of a line. Like that. And so I'll just go over the whole top of the cake. And then I'll show you how awesome it looks. Okay, so just make sure it's nice and pressed. And you can go over it as many times as you need. And it'll kind of re-impression it each time. So you can see it's kind of a nice, it could be a bubbly texture, it could be a scaly texture, it could be a cobblestone, depending on what kind of um, colors you did underneath. But I'm just kind of going for a pretty, maybe under the sea kind of look. That's really cool. And then you can also do it on the sides. So you just push down. And obviously you would take, you know, your time and getting it nice and perfect. But I'm just going for kind of an impressionistic look here. So I'm just pushing wherever it needs to be. And you can do this with any of the mats. It doesn't have to just be this one. Um, I like this one because it does have kind of a random look to it, so it matches up really nicely um, at the edges but you can do it with any of the other ones. All right, so I'll just hold it up so you guys can see. And it just kind of gives it an overall nice textured look. There we go. Very cool. OK. So that's how you do it on fondant. Now you can also do the same technique on uh, ice malt. So if you have a piece that you don't just want it this size, if you want it bigger, uh, you can do it the same way, which I have a piece over here that I'll show you. So I have, I used another flex form, and I had it, this is already cool so that I can show you guys, but I had it just in a paisley shape, like that, and I poured in the ice mold. So now I have a nice cute little paisley, and this would work also for a base for something. Um, you can use this if you want to do a sculpture, so I could take this piece and glue this on top, and you could have a nice little sculpture or cake top or centerpiece. Different layering and you know, different shapes. You can customize the flex forms to do any shape that you wanted to. All right, so for this one, since this is hard, we're going to have to melt it a little bit. So I'm just going to take the torch. This is just a little chef's blow torch. You can get them at hardware stores, kitchen stores. And I'm just going to heat up the surface. And if you have a really big piece, you don't want to torch the entire thing all at once, and then trying to impression it, you want to go in sections, because this is going to cool really quickly. So this piece is only a little bit bigger than my mat, so I don't need to really do small sections. All right, so I just get it nice and soft, and then I'm going to take, and I'm just going to lay this right on top, the same way I did with the fondant, press down. On there. And then I'm going to lift it up. I'm going to do the next little section, and I'll hold this up as soon as I get the other section. All right? Wow, that is looking so cool. So you can see this is kind of, it has the same design to it, so you could do the textured side. You can flip it over, it kind of makes it look a little bit brighter. And it's just a different look because it is transparent. So you can have this a different color. Um, you can put some icing images in the back of it, have kind of a pattern in it. You can you know, do whatever design that you like inside of it.
There we go. All right, so I'll set that there. So that will take a few more minutes to cool just since I torched it. I want to make sure it's nice and set before I do anything with it. All right, so now the next piece that I'm going to show you is how to actually use it with fondant. So if you wanted to make um, a cupcake topper or a little fondant decoration, I'll just take a little bit of, I'm using a blue fondant, and sat nice as well. And I'll just mix it up a little bit here. All right, and I'll roll it out. And you don't need very much. It needs to be pretty thin. Yeah, maybe a little bit might help. Yeah, let's try some corn starch. Not sure. <laughs> Just a tiny bit. Yep. Perfect. Sorry. A lot. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'm going to dust over this anyway, so I'm going to starch right now. So I'm just going to roll this out, and you don't want it too thin, because then when you impress it with the mat, it's going to rip through. So you don't want it super paper thin. You just need kind of a nice piece. If you wanted this to harden, you could also use gum paste. You can um, mix Tylos into this to get it to firm up. Okay. I'm just kind of rolling out a general size so that it'll fit with my mat. There we go. Make sure it's all nice and loose before I cut it so it's not sticking anywhere. And the mat I'm going to use for this one is the rose. You can see it has a really pretty design on it. I'm going to set this down right there. And I'm going to push down onto it. And I'm just going to kind of hold it and lightly go over it with the rolling pin just to make sure that it's nice and smooth and I don't have dents where I'm poking at it and prodding. Just like that. And then I'll peel it up. I don't know if you can see that, but we have a little bit of a design in there. Really nice. Crazy. So then I'll take that, and I have um, a three inch uh, cookie cutter, and this will cover the top of your cake or your cupcake. If you want to do something on more of a puffed top, and you want to put icing down rather than a flat top, you can use a three and a half inch cutter. So it's a little bit bigger just to kind of compensate for that little bit of puffiness. So I'm going to take and just line this up with my design, making sure that it's even. And it's a little bit smaller, but you can still get all of that nice detail with it. So I'm just kind of cutting, and I'm going to peel the excess around the cutter so that I don't have any rough edges or stretching or anything. All right. Up to the side this up, and then I'll have my nice cupcake. So you could put it on just like that if you wanted to, but I'm actually going to dust this to get it a little bit um, brighter and to bring out some of the details. Okay? So I'm just going to take a little bit of, this is just pearl dust, and I have it in a nice pump brush. Um, this is again from the Sugar Art, and so I'm just going to do kind of light dusting over top. And this just adds a really quick and really pretty accent to it. So you could use any color if you wanted to do it in white. Then you could use a pink or a purple or blue or whatever color um, dust that you wanted to do. You could use petal dust on top of these as well. Or you can paint it with gel colors at that point. So that just kind of gives it a really pretty highlight. See that? So it really brings out the... Yeah, it really just kind of makes all the little details pop. Mm -hmm. All right. So I'm going to set this one down. And I'm also going to powder. Let's see if this one is cool. Yep. I'm also going to dust on the spider web to bring out some of the details. So this one is cool now. So see how I just peeled that away? Okay. So I have my spider web on the mat here. I'm going to peel the mat away from the piece. Just like that, so you can see it has those yeah, nice ridges in it. Is. And so I'm going to take a little bit of my powder. I don't want to do too much because then it can get streaky. And I'm just going to lightly dust over the black. 
and it's going to kind of pick it up. I, use, uh, I like to do this especially with isomalt because isomalt, since it's transparent, um, some of the details can get lost easier. They'll just kind of blend in. So if you put just a little bit of dust on it, it brings out all of the pretty um, lines and designs inside of it. And I think especially with the spider web, kind of the white and the black complement each other really well. So you can see now that has a nice shine to it too, nice and sparkly. It makes it look like a spider web. It does. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Maybe a little dewdrop. Okay. So then there we have all the different ways. And there's other ways that you can use these too. It's not just these things that I'm showing you. If you have another idea that you can apply it to, you know, they're very versatile. You can also, um, I know Ruth had done a class and she did uh, use them for templates for brushed embroidery. Um, so oh, you can, cool. yeah, I think we have a picture of that, right? Mm -hmm. There you go. So she used some of them, um, the rows, to kind of give you a cheat sheet and a guide so that you don't have to worry about a design or a template or anything like that. You just have to kind of uh, follow the lines with it, and it works really, really well for the brushed embroidery. That's genius for brushed embroidery. Exactly, because that's easy. Yeah, you have the, the template there already. Yep, all you have to do is follow the lines. And it's pretty. Very, very pretty. It came out really nice. All right. And then she did another bit here. Yeah, you can see. You can embellish on top of them. You don't just have to leave them flat. You can use dry jays and pearls and glue them on with piping gel or icing. Or um, you can put you know, brooches and stripes. And you can layer things, flowers. Um, she used on the brown one, she used the burlap uh, on top with the petals to kind of layer the different textures. So you can cut different things out um, if you wanted to do one pattern in the background and then a different pattern with polka dots on top of it. Or you know you can layer things on top. You don't just have to leave them flat. So it's really nice how you can kind of customize it to what you need. That's really cool. And these just uh, these were from Ruth Ricky's class mm -hmm. here at IVIE. Mm -hmm. She was nice enough to send us some pictures of yes. the things that she did with, with these mats. Um, I, I love that the top yellow one that has yeah. like the beaded. The beads, yeah, they're really pretty. And I believe that one is, um, it has the indents of the beads in it, and she put the dry shades or the piping on top of it. On top of it. Oh, that's so really cool. So you just cool. kind of accentuate it even mm -hmm. more. Very cool. I love, love, love that. And then Roland and Marsha Winbeckler actually taught a class mm -hmm. also um, here at IVIE. Yes. And these are some of the results of the things that their students uh, did. Yeah, you can see the beautiful um, sea sculptures and they use the mats on the bottom as their base so you can use that to kind of attach everything to the top. Very cool. Yeah, the, the base is right there. Those are, mm -hmm. are using those mats. Very cool. Yeah, really pretty. Neat, neat stuff. Okay, um, we are going to do our question and answer portion. For those of you that are new to Cake Boo, um, what you're going to do is you're going to, let's see, on the, there we go, all right, okay, so on your screen, off to the right hand side, there is a chat box, um, if you have questions for Sydney, uh, you want to ask those questions there, I forgot to talk about that at the beginning like I usually do, so uh, we're going to do, um, Sydney's going to be able to answer any questions that you guys might have for her. Um, make sure that you get them submitted as soon as you can. There is a little bit of a lag, and so there, uh, we, we won't get them for a couple, uh, for about a minute or so. Uh, so make sure you get your questions in, and we will get those asked as, as, uh, as many as we can <laughs> in the time that we have left, um, which we should be, we should be good. Um, so yeah, get your questions submitted, and um, in the meantime, while we're waiting for the questions to start rolling in, uh, Sydney is all over the country all the time, mm -hmm. so you want to tell us where you're going to be next, what, what classes are coming up for you? Um, let's see, I have a lot. Uh, this was our first stop on our trip. We're going to be gone for about a month, uh, this trip, and so we did the IDA, which was so much fun, and then next we are driving starting today to uh, Austin, Texas. I'll have um, classes there. And then I will be going to, let's see, Maryland for the uh, Great American Cake Show. And doing, uh, I think we'll have a vendor booth there. 
and going to Connecticut to do some classes. And let's see, after that we'll be going home and then we'll be going to New Orleans and Chicago is in November. So in Miami. So we'll have classes all in there and all the information uh, about those are on my website as well. So more detail about which classes we're doing. Awesome. Okay, so our first question is, um, question for Sydney, how do you keep your isomalt from being transparent? Okay, um, to keep it from being transparent, so yeah. I guess keep it um, nice and opaque, I guess this is probably what you mean. I, how about you talk about both? Okay, I'll talk to about keep it. To keep it clear or okay. to keep it opaque? Okay, um, to first I'll answer the opaque part. If you want the isomalt to not be um, transparent, if you want it to be an opaque, you can actually add white color to this and it will turn it into more like a porcelain or a plastic and that will um, just kind of make it a solid rather than a transparent color. So you're talking about a white mm -hmm. um, airbrush color? Airbrush or or color, white yeah, just anything white, and then if you wanted a color added to that, you could add it with the white, and that will make it solid. Um, ice malt also, uh, it does sometimes get a little bit cloudy, so going back to keeping it transparent, you can put a little bit of oil on this, and it will keep it shiny. Uh, it's better than sugar in the humidity. I smell it's a lot better. It's a lot stronger and clearer and doesn't get sticky or melt as fast. But it still can have a little bit of trouble with humidity, especially if you're in a very humid place. Being in Florida, very, very humid. Here, not as much, but sometimes it can still um, get a little bit sticky. So you can put a little bit of oil on it. Like I dusted these, you don't have to do anything. So now that I put the pearl dust on it, you don't have to do anything. If you put paint on it, it just needs something over the whole thing to seal it. So if you want to keep it transparent, you don't want the pearl eyes, you can put a little bit of just cooking spray, any type of cooking spray, canola, vegetable, olive oil, any type, as long as it's spray, it can't be in the bottle for some reason. Um, but you can do that, you can use an edible lacquer uh, to keep it nice and shiny. You just may, if you do use the oil, you may have to re-grease it um, every few days or every few weeks, depending on your humidity level. Okay, very nice. Okay, someone's asking, where can we get these amazing products? Yes, um, the products, we do have them on my website, on cmecakes.com, and then we also, they are carrying them in stores around the country. So um, certain cake decorating and supply stores will have them as well. Okay. We actually have a, an easy link that we're going to uh, give you guys in, in just a minute for the giveaway. So, okay. so yeah, we'll, we'll give that to you. In fact, here, it's uh, www.cakefood.com forward slash Sydney, so S-I-D-N-E-Y. So that's uh, the, the link that we're going to give you today so that you guys can head over there um, to, to get to the, to the website easy. <laughs> so yeah, that's where you're going to find all of, all of the, the mats that you guys um, can, can order if you don't win. <laughs> all right. Okay. Oh, that's nice. Someone says, uh, I don't have a question, just had to say that she is really an amazing young woman. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Which she is, isn't she? <laughs> Sydney really is impressive to, to accomplish all the things that she's done. And I have to give a shout out to her parents. Because I'm a parent, I know that they have to do a whole lot to yes, they help, help her get to where she has gotten. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay, we have another one coming in. Take a second. Now I'm going to head over there because that'll be easier. Okay, here's a question. Someone said, Are you available in Canada? Um, I haven't been over there um, personally, but I mean, I would love to if the opportunity came up. Um, but our products, I mean, we can ship anywhere. So, you know, as far as that goes, that's fine. And, um, yeah, so. All right. Um, we just got word. This is really cool. If you order through, um, through well, not through Cake Food, but if you order uh, something uh, for how long? The next 24 hours, 78 hours? Through the end of the week? Does that work? <laughs> okay, through the end of the week. Uh, through the end of the week, there will be free shipping on mm -hmm. orders if you mention cake food. Yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So uh, when you submit your order, just say I watched cake food, yes. and uh, you'll get free shipping. Perfect. So that's pretty awesome. Yeah. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Um, let's see. Someone says you mentioned icing images. Mm -hmm. Do you put those in white? The sugar is still hot liquid, or after the it's set up? Yes, you can use icing images. They work really, really well. Um, that is the brand that I like because they won't break down and they won't melt or anything. Um, you can use the printed sheets. You can use the sparkle sheets. You can use plain sheets. Um, anything that you have. Uh, I usually will put it. If I have a mold, I will put it inside the mold. So I will pour the ice mold first. So let's say I have a diamond. I would pour the ice salt first and then take a piece and cover over the back of it while it's still liquid so that it sticks down onto the ice malt. Afterwards, uh, if you don't have a punch or a die to cut it out that it fits exactly inside, you can just trim out any excess. Uh, if you wanted to use it with something like the flex forms, you can lay it down and then put this frame right on top of the paper. So then you can go back and trim it out if you need to or you can you know, lay individual pieces of stuff. So uh, there's a lot of different ways you can use that. And uh, there's more tutorials on my website as well on more uh, different ice milk and things like that with those. Very cool. So yeah, if you guys have um, questions that don't get asked here, she really she really does have a lot of good information. Yep. And um, back, I don't know how long ago it's been. It's been a little while. Mm -hmm. But if you go look through the archives of our master series, um, it, it's on the website. If you just click on the the little tab up top that says Master Series. You can scan or scroll through all of the different trainings that have um, been done in the past, and you can find Sydney's. And she has done sugar for us before, so um, I believe you did a sugar. I think I did casting. Casting, I think pouring into molds mm -hmm. and putting together like a little butterfly flower piece. Yeah, that's I'm pretty sure. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. Yeah, it's been it's been a while. Yeah. So anyway, you can look through that, and so there's some really good information on that too. So her website, look at the the video tutorials there, and the training that we have in the past, and also you know look for her in, in your area for classes. So great information. <laughs> All right. Um, someone just asked, and we can get information right here from the source. Uh, would the free shipping be just the U.S. or Canada as well? Yeah. Just U.S. Yes. Sorry, guys. Yeah. <laughs> I think uh, I know. I've shipped to Canada before, and it's it you know I can get pretty pricey. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so okay. Um. Ooh, someone asked a fun question. Where did you get the chef coats? The chef coat is actually from Peggy Tucker, and her sister makes them, and I love it. It's awesome. Okay. Um. I do do. They have a website, don't they? Uh, Peg's Premier Peg's Premier, Products. Yeah, Peg's Premier yeah. Products yeah. Is, is where... Um, yeah, they're awesome. There's tons of different designs, and they fit really well, and the materials are really nice. I, I'm getting one. Yeah. It's, it's on the way. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, I've, I've liked my chef's coat that I've, that I've had, but it's time for an upgrade, one yeah. that matches Kiku. Yeah. You know. Perfect. So I can't really wear it on the Kate Koo trains because it's pink. Uh, <laughs> I don't, yeah. Anyway. <laughs> All right. Oh, here's a comment. If you take a, a one of Peggy's or Sydney's classes, you won't be disappointed. Which I agree completely. I actually did get to sit in on one of Sydney's classes last week uh, for a little bit of it, and it, it's a fun, fun atmosphere. Yeah. Good information, and it's hands-on. So mm -hmm. I mean, you get to just. I, honestly, I, I've i seen a lot of, of isomalt. I've done poured isomalt before, but I've never actually, I had never done an actual blown piece. Mm -hmm. I, I've always meant to. In fact, I have uh, Sydney's pump and all the stuff, <laughs> but I just haven't taken the time to, to pull it out and do it. And so um, Sydney actually sat down with me and showed me how to, to Actually, blow a, a ball. Yeah, you did really good. <laughs> it was it was really fun, and you know, so so hands on having her sitting right there, hands on, really makes a big difference yeah. because it, unless you actually start working with it, it you know. Yeah, it's easier to get your hands on it. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so <laughs> someone said hi, Mike and Michelle. <laughs> They're sitting over there at the picture. <laughs> <They're waiting. laughs> All right. Um, any chance you'll come to New Hampshire to offer any classes? Um, we don't have any planned right now, but um, we can, I mean, if you contact us, we can definitely, you know, work something out. If you have students and a place to do it, mm -hmm. definitely we'll travel. Um, we're up in that area a lot, so, you know, maybe okay. passing through one time. 
Yeah, um, I'm sure if you emailed Sydney and um, it, honestly, if you if any of the cake decorators in the you know in the cake decorating yeah. community, if you want a class from them, pull it together. Yeah. You know, just find some people that want to take a class, and you know, then contact them and say, hey, we've got something lined up, can you come? And you know that takes out takes a lot of work load off of them because that is a lot of work to get yeah. classes lined up. Yeah, most teachers so, do. It's just email or call or contact. Them. Yeah. So if you want someone in your area to come and teach, just find enough people that want to take the class and, and contact them. It, it's it's really and, and they would love you for it. Yes. <laughs> they would love you forever. <laughs> so yeah, um, definitely contact Sydney if you want if you want her in your area. Um, let's see, someone said uh, the classes are not just limited to ice and mold, which mm -hmm. is true. Yeah, I also, I do chocolate and I do fondant and gum paste and things. Ice mold is usually the most requested, so that's what, and that's what I like to do, um, that's what I do the most. So, but I do other classes as well, not just ice mold. Mm -hmm. You know, people usually have their, you know, their signature thing mm -hmm. that's, you yeah. know, you, yeah, I, I want you to teach, and I know that you're, you know, seriously good at this. Yeah. So, so yeah, I'm sure that's why you're you're requested for that so right. much. <laughs> All right. Okay. Um, I don't see any more questions rolling in at the moment. I'm sure that there might be some coming, but um, like like I said, there is the lag. So, uh, we're gonna go on and uh, announce the giveaway. If you guys have any questions, um, and we have a little bit of time, um, at the end we can answer a few more questions. Um, oh, there's a quick question. How many do you need in order to line up a class? Um, to do a class, it really depends on the class and if you're having multiple. So if we're doing you know, just one class, you need more than if we're doing a few classes in a day. Generally, um, depending on the class, around 10 students per class. And also depending on the length of you know amount that we need to travel, if it's just you know the next state over across the country or whatever it is. Mm -hmm. so, yeah. But if you email us or call us, we can talk more in detail about that kind of thing. Okay. And you said you're going to be at the uh, Great American Cake Show yes. this week. Mm -hmm. Okay. So are you going to have your mix there? Yes. Yeah. Well, definitely. Yeah. Have all yes. of our <laughs> and, uh, everything in there. So we'll probably be showing sure how to use it to um, the booth for the classes and things like that. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, you can look from there. Okay. Bruce class. Mm -hmm. Is she gonna be? Oh yeah, mini classes. Um, in mini classes in January in Orlando, Florida. Uh, she's going to be doing a class on these types of mats and how to use them and do really, really amazing things with them. She can do like you saw in the picture before. Um, they just come out so pretty. So uh, definitely, you can check that out online. Florida mini classes. And that's Ruth Ricky. Yes. I don't know if you've heard that. <laughs> so yeah, Ruth Ricky is doing the, the mini classes in Florida. And uh, yeah, a lot of them match to her designs. So uh, she's going to be. She really knows that. Uh, has a lot of different techniques that she's come up with. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right, so for the, the giveaway, we are going to, I'm going to pull up this page for you, and let's see, okay. oh, there you go, you guys can show, oh, look at the fancy package and everything, so cute, okay, I'm going to pull up this screen share, oh, there we go. There we go. That should show you guys there. All right, so the giveaway is you follow the link that I gave you guys earlier, www.cakefood.com forward slash Sydney. That will take you to her sales page where you can see um, the products that she has, the, the mats and everything. And so the question today is going to be a fairly easy one, I think, if you know. <laughs> Uh, what is the color of the flower on Sydney's logo? So there's two flowers on the logo, but what color? And uh, email that to cakefood.com at gmail.com. And uh, how about Sydney, you give me a number. Number? Mm -hmm. um, 11. 11. Okay, so the 11th person to submit the answer 
is going to win these mats. Okay, so you guys, this giveaway, um, oh, they couldn't even see that. Okay, so this giveaway, all these mats right here, six of them, these mats are about $11 a piece. Yep. So that's $66 right there. So, I mean, a sweet giveaway. <laughs> all right, so um, I will be watching for the emails to come rolling in. It will take a minute. Again, the lag. I, it didn't used to have a lag. This Hangouts didn't used to, but they do now. I don't need to do that, do I? <laughs> okay, so again, here you go. Here is the, the link again, if you uh, missed out on that. www.kku.com forward slash Sydney. And uh, answer the question, what color are the flowers on Sydney's logo? So, and email that to kkfu.com at gmail.com. <laughs> okay, sorry about the noise, guys. I know there's uh, an issue with that. But. Okay, so in the meantime, while we're waiting for that, Sydney, um, let's talk about which one of these mats is your favorite. Oh, that's a hard one. <laughs> Um, I think one of my favorites is probably the rose, the one that I rolled out the fondant on. Oh, okay. Yeah. The cupcake. Yeah, it's just really pretty. Thing. It is really pretty. And it's just a really, you know, delicate, delicate kind of thing that you can, you know. Yeah. And it's, that would be a really great one if you do a lot of, you know, wedding cupcakes. Right, yeah, and then you can kind of com um, combine it if you wanted to do a 3D rose on top of some of them and more flatter roses and... Um, you know, just kind of make it a little bit easier. But I just like that one. Definitely. Very cool. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. We're almost there. You guys uh, got, the, got to that point? Okay, for me, oh gosh. I, I have, um, I think it's between, oh, where's that one? I, I I like the bubble one, the one that you used on the cake. Mm -hmm. That one's really awesome. Yes. Yeah. The one that was on Ruth Ricky's cupcake mm -hmm. that, that has the um, swirl, yeah, the, the, the swirl dots. dots. Love that one. Yeah, that one is pretty. Love that one. And then there's one that is kind of a lace, and it's kind of off to the side. Yeah. It looks like the mat was almost done wrong, but it's it's meant to be that way. And I love that. Yeah, it kind of has a strong of the what just plain, mm -hmm. and it has a design coming across the Yeah. Side. Yeah, there's an argyle one that I really like. Yeah, that, that one's really cool. <laughs> so lots of really fun textures. Very cool. Okay, let's see again. Oh my goodness! <laughs> Our winner is Caleb Spilton. <laughs> Congratulations, Caleb. <laughs> That's really fun. Caleb's kind of a buddy of mine. Awesome. His mom is a little into cake decorating, but he he's he's more of my uh, marketing friend. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know. Maybe we'll convert Caleb into a cake decorator. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he's about your age, I think. Okay. Anyway, so congratulations, Caleb. We will uh, get those to you. And um, yeah, I think that's that's about it, guys. Um, let's see. I think we might have had a question there at the end. Lots of pick -me's. Okay. All right. I think that's um, I think that's about it, guys. Okay. Thank you so much for coming and joining us on Cake Food. Thank you, Sydney. Thank you for having me. It was awesome. This was really fun. We'll have to do more of these uh, live things. Yeah. That's just really fun. So, all right. Okay, we'll we'll see you guys next week. I guess. Yep. We have a really fun training plan. So, join us next week. Okay. Bye. Bye. Mhm. Mm Bye. Yeah, we really are going. <laughs> I'm gonna get this right. Okay.